Hello everyone. In this video, I will explain the demodulation of a double sideband suppressed carrier signal. The method what I am going to describe here is a coherent detection of DSPSC. Now, what do you mean by this coherent demodulation of double sideband suppressed carrier signal is that I will explain using this using this block diagram. Now, see this method is called coherent detection of the double sideband suppressed carrier because in this case what I am using is for a demodulation process I am using the same carrier whatever I have used for modulation purpose in the transmitter. Okay, so in the modulation in the transmitter side let us assume that we have used a carrier which has the frequency equal to fc okay the frequency of the carrier signal is fc that means the same carrier signal is regenerated in the receiver by using a local oscillator so in case of a linear diode demodulator we don't have to use any carrier in the receiver or in the demodulator for the demodulation purpose but here we have to use a carrier and the another condition actually here is the carrier whatever I am using in the receiver should have the same frequency and the phase at all the time when I compare that with the transmitter carrier. That means the frequency and the phase of the carrier should be synchronized with the frequency and the phase of the carrier in the transmitter at all the time. So this is the major requirement. That means the frequency and the phase should be incoherent with the transmitter carrier all the time. That's why this method is called coherent detection of uh, dsb -SC, or we also call this as a synchronized or synchronous detection. Now, in this process, how exactly we demodulate the signal and we get back the original message signal that I will explain. Now, what and all we have here, we have a product modulator followed by a low pass filter. Okay, and one local oscillator used to generate the carrier for local purpose or locally. So the input for this product modulator or a multiplier is nothing but it is the double sideband suppressed carrier wave. Okay, so this S of T is multiplied with C of T, we get a V of T. When this V of T which consists of both uh, message signal as well as a high frequency signal which we will see later in the derivation part. When applied that to the low pass filter, the low pass filter allows only the low pass signal that is the message signal. So this V O of T should be the message signal. That's what actually we are expecting. This is the desired message signal what I am expecting. Now along with the derivation let us understand how the demodulation process happens. Okay. So as you know S of T is nothing but it is sorry V of T is nothing but it is S of T multiplied by C of T. Now just look at this equation. Now we have a double sideband suppressed carrier signal which is one of the input for that product modulator. Okay, in the time domain, as you know, a simple multiplication of M of T with uh, AC cos 2 pi FCT, that is the carrier in the transmitter side will give you the double sideband suppressed carrier signal. Now this S of T is one of the input. The other input is C of T. So in my case, I have taken a AC dash as the notation. It is not necessary that the AC and a, this amplitude, the peak amplitude of carrier generated in the receiver should be same as the transmitter carrier, but the frequency should be same Okay, the frequency of this carrier and the locally generated carrier should be same. Now, these two are the inputs given to the product modulator. What is the output of the product modulator? The product output of the product modulator is V of T, which is given by simple multiplication because I am using a product modulator, which is a multiplier. Now, what is this phi represents actually? The phi actually represents the phase difference. The phase difference between the local carrier and the transmitter carrier signal. We expect this phase difference to be zero. If it is not equal to zero, what happens? We will understand that in the next slides. Now, so let us say we have some certain phi here, the phase difference that is also considered. Okay. Now, this is the output of the product modulator. I substitute both uh, C of T and uh, S of T over here. So we get uh, this particular equation. So where this part is nothing but the first part is nothing but S of T. So this is S of T, this part is S of T, okay, and this part is C of T. Both are multiplied. I rearrange the equation over here. I bring the amplitude term on a one side, this AC cos 2 pi FCT on the other side. This part somewhere here I write, okay, and this M of T is written somewhere here. Some rearrangement of the equation is done. Now, 
when uh, when i apply a trigonometric rule say cos a and cos b this is let us say cos a and cos b when i apply that trigonometric rule i will get the equation as something like this okay because as you know cos a cos b is nothing but it is half of cos of a plus b plus cos of a minus b just apply that rule and you will get this equation now so where this first part which represents actually m of certain amplitude we have certain amplitude here m of t multiplied by cos of 4 pi fct plus 5 that's what i'll get okay that is a 2 fc component okay this m of t is shifted by 2 fc in the frequency domain that is the meaning what about second term the second term represents actually ac ac dash by 2 m of t into cos of 5 okay so out of this the required term is the second term so i am interested only the second term because uh, we have a m of t over there this is a signal which has m of t okay cos phi actually nothing but uh, phi is a constant and uh, if i consider different angle this actually gives some constant uh, value that's all because cos of say let us say zero cos of zero is one which is the highest value what i can get one multiplied by this will decide the amplitude of this m of t that means it's a simple scaling factor that is ac ac dash by 2 and cos phi is a scaling factor of m of t okay so i am interested only in the second term and the second term can be extracted or uh, passed by using a low pass filter this component is passed by uh, this is given to the low pass filter out of which only the second term is passed by the low pass filter now the output of the low pass filter is nothing but it is the second component right is it now for a different values of phi what exactly happens i say uh, it should be coherent the carrier frequency and the phase should be incoherent with the transmitter carrier and frequency and phase now in case let us say it is exactly incoherent or this phase difference is actually equal to zero as i told earlier cos of zero is one i will get a highest amplitude for a demodulated signal a m of t will have a highest amplitude of ac ac dash by two now if uh, phi is equal to 10 degree accordingly the amplitude is going to decrease the amplitude part is going to decrease now i take a special condition over here let us say at some certain instant of time this phi is actually equal to some 90 degree plus plus 90 or minus 90 degree now what happens cos of 90 plus or minus 90 is always equal to zero that means here uh vo of t will actually become zero right even if the m of t is present my demodulator is not able to detect or produce the message signal for phi equal to plus or minus 90 degree okay even there even if there is a transmission from the transmitter side my receiver is not able to detect the signal that means my detector will produce a zero output this effect is actually called as quadrature null effect that means the output of the demodulator is null or zero because of the phase difference of 90 degree or quadrature in phase fine so this is the major problem or issue with the coherent simple coherent demodulator so we have to be very careful with the phase difference we have to maintain synchronize the phase this is the requirement now i'll go to the frequency domain so let us say this is the output of the product modulator again same equation i have considered and if i take the fourier transform to this what i will get as i told earlier this is equivalent to shifting m of t or that is m of f in the frequency domain by 2fc so i get a ac ac dash by 4 m of f minus 2fc plus m of f plus 2fc what about this this is a constant ac ac dash by 4 let us say m of f that's what i have written over there directly i have written a m of f for this so i have a message spectrum here okay so this is equal to this part is equal to this part okay the first part and the fourier transform of the second part is equal to this and if i represent that uh, you know graphically in the frequency domain so this is m of a original spectrum which i have to get back from the demodulation okay so this is v naught of f fine so this spectrum is actually represented here on both the positive side as well as negative side centered at uh, 2 fc is a m of f same spectrum m of f shifted by uh, plus or minus 2 fc and this m of f is represented here now m of f is represented here with a magnitude equal to ac ac dash by 4 please forgive me i have not uh, taken a ac dash in my derivation throughout i have taken a ac dash also so which is simple you know amplitude you have to you can neglect also no issues okay now so if i pass this entire thing through a low pass filter 
okay what i'll get i'll get only this particular term so let us say i have a ideal low pass filter which has the response equal to this now what happens here is this response and this response is rejected by the low pass filter and passes only this particular uh, spectrum of the v naught of f that means my message signal is recovered now so in this video i have explained uh, how to demodulate the double sideband suppressed carrier signal by using coherent demodulation okay thank you for watching this